UFP, the United Federation of Podcasts. Franchise Fatigue, the little podcast on the United Federation of Podcasts Network, where your two hosts go over all the films and remakes and sequels in a franchise. We talk about them for you, and then we have a lot of fun, and we usually laugh, and we usually have a great time, and we dance, and we definitely try our best to disregard that tingling, dreadful feeling that's in the back of our heads when something really bad is going to happen, like tonight's discussion. On Jaws the Revenge. <laughs> and joining me is the ever spiraling out of control gambler, Zach Moore. I saw a shark the size of a tangerine. <laughs> that is the worst Michael Caine accent. That was pretty bad. I'm, 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 usually pretty, <laughs> I'm usually better with my impressions. That was like Forrest but... Gump. That, that was more <laughs> Forrest Gump than Michael I saw a shark the size of a tangerine. Okay, I gotta stop the impressions. Perhaps like a box of great white sharks. It is not my night for impressions, but all that to say, John Mills is back with us to finish off the Jaws saga. Welcome back, John. How you doing tonight? Oh, how could I miss this discussion? I couldn't skip this if I wanted to. Come on. No, Come on. we're so grateful that you joined us. And as we said in the last episode, this was your first watch of this movie. You've been yes. saving it for a special occasion, like a bottle of fine wine. <laughs> <laughs> and now yes. that you've opened this bottle of fine wine, you've discovered that it's turned into vinegar. <laughs> yes. Well, uh <laughs> Your Francis Ford Coppola Reserve wine has been replaced with Boone's Farm. Let's see how he reacts. <laughs> Just the revenge. I love the poster for this movie. Yes. You know, all, you know, I will say all the posters for all the Jaws movies are pretty are effective. Great. So so don't judge a movie by its poster is the lesson of this franchise. No. Oh, good point. Just like good I always point. tell people, don't judge a podcast by its co-host. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> Don't judge a person by their Michael Caine impression. That's what I say. Uh, but uh, let's get right into it. Let's get down to business here. Jaws, the revenge. Uh, not called Jaws 4. So this is interesting to me. And I kind of, because I hadn't seen this movie since I was a kid. I saw it once a long time ago, uh, rented it, uh, watched it on VHS when I was younger. And that's it. So this is the only the second time I've seen this film for this podcast. And... The story goes that this movie is actually one of those sequels that ignores and erases the previous sequel. So this is 1987, by the way, the year I was born. So Jaws 4, Jaws the Revenge is one of those like, <laughs> you know, great <laughs> Superman 4, Jaws 4. It was, it was a great year for movies uh, when I was born. But anyway, <laughs> we also got Predator and RoboCop, so we're okay. But Second only to 1999. <laughs> yeah, yes, yes, very good. Uh, this movie... <laughs> erases Jaws 3. And if you're not really paying attention, you know, like we were talking about last time, like the home video market. Now, home video was around in the late 80s, but people probably weren't rewatching Jaws 3 that much. But uh, <laughs> uh, Dennis Quaid has been recast with, with Lance Guest, the last Starfighter, okay? And Sean Brody has been recast as well. Uh, but but Mike Brody, he didn't marry Catherine from the previous film, who was the uh, uh, his co-worker at SeaWorld. She's gone. We have a new character here who is his wife. But everyone is recast, and she's blonde. So you're like, is that supposed to be the same person? If you're not really paying attention to the names, you can probably just, oh, well, that's yeah, that's the same lady from before. And then Sean, he's a deputy in a midi island. Amity. Jeez, you're still saying it wrong. <laughs> I don't say sabotage. I say sabotage. <laughs> so <laughs> a midi island, he, he's working uh, uh, for the... Uh, the the sheriff's department there and in jaws three he had moved to colorado was all about cowboy boots for some reason and that's all gone uh so so just i I know we're not going to talk about it yet but what do you guys think about that that this is like one of those sequels that ignores the previous one like this is way before they started doing that in most film franchises but to uh call back to our conversation about uh jaws three and its parallels with halloween three 
this is a parallel with Halloween 4, which ignores what happened in the third one there as well. So we continue a fine tradition of reboot quills before such a thing was ever uttered. That's true. So just proving that these things that we love to talk about in the modern era, where it's like, oh, it's a reboot, it's a reboot quill. They've been doing this for ages. We just didn't have a name for it. I don't know. I never paid attention. I'm like, I thought it was the same woman, and I'm like, he's just gone out of his cowboy phase and become a cop. I don't know. Worked for me. Yeah, because when they re, because I when they recast people, you just you, you, everything's out the window. So I was thinking this is more like a Terminator Salvation, another fourth film of a franchise, by the way. Uh, Terminator mm-hmm. Salvation situation mm-hmm. where it's like, oh, here's John Connor and Catherine Brewster, but they're just new actors and actresses. I'm like, okay, but no yeah, recasting when you get to Jaws four. I'm I'm surprised that Lorraine Gary came back for this thing. I'm like, well, they kind you know, of like like built the whole thing re- around her, is and thing. her being the the wife of a Universal executive, you know, had a lot had a lot to do with that, and that's why she mm. was put to the forefront. So I think all those factors come into play. I don't have exact trivia to that effect. I'm sure if I dug deeper, I might be able to find some, but uh, it's rare that you see a, a a major sequel to a major blockbuster center around a 50 year old woman. Yeah. I'm not how old she's supposed to be? So I mean, hey. All credit to them for putting a, a woman past her prime in Hollywood in a starring role. Uh, but there was some definite nepotism going on there with her uh, marriage to a universal executive. But again, you have another echo in place of, you know, we, to refer back to the Halloween franchise, you know, because when they bring that back in 2018, right, an older female lead brought back. And so Jaws the Revenge is actually a real trailblazer in a lot of ways. As so basically, we should be watching Jaws be. and Halloween in parallel every time. <laughs> you know They're what? Like I think options. that there's a thesis paper here to rival the Kane Hackman theory in PCU. Yes, I do. Well, and then if you want to go further, you know, I did bring up Terminator, and they've they've rebooted Terminator again, and, and Linda Hamilton is coming back as an older Sarah Connor, which is technically, this is going to be the third film of the franchise, even though it was the sixth entry, ignoring the previous three. So, <laughs> oh. wow. so this is really Jaws 3, The Revenge. Yes, actually, yeah. Yeah, that's that's part of why they, and all that to say, that's part of why they dropped the number, because you're like, well, why didn't they just call it Jaws, you know, 4? But uh, th- this is a subtle way to let you know it's not really Jaws 4, it's really Jaws 3 in this new continuity, uh, the Superman Returns of its day. But uh, but getting really deep into the trivia now before we start talking about other franchises uh, some more. Uh, this film, it was the first film shot on Super 35 format. At Universal Pictures. Ooh. Oh. Even though this was the case, it says filmed in Panavision at the end credits. So in a very Jaws the Revenge move, they got that wrong in the end credits. They didn't even credit <laughs> that it was Super 35 <laughs> format. Um, and also, uh, the tagline this time, it's personal. Again, much like Jaws 2, just when you thought it was safe to go back into the water, this is one of the most iconic catchphrases and taglines of any uh, movie. And it, it became so you know infamous that uh, Back to the Future Part 2 they parodied it because when Marty goes to the future, Jaws 19 is directed by Max Spielberg. And it says this time it's really personal because that's something that had become a cliche after this. And then to, to keep our web of con- everything is connected, uh, hashtag it's all connected, Terminator 2, it's poster with Arnold. It, oh, at the top it says right. it's nothing personal because that's genius. That's right. Because it's subverting the expectation of this time it's personal and he's a machine. So it's not personal. So anyway. That's right. I've forgotten about that on the poster. Oh, my gosh. That's right. Oh, oh boy. So uh, this was the last theatrical uh, film directed by Joseph Sargent. He went on to direct uh, many successful TV projects and, and TV movies after this. But he also directed the first production order episode of Star Trek, the original series, The Corbin Night Mover. So I thought that was a cool uh, bit of trivia for all us Star Trek fans. Wow. Here. So uh, Corbin Knight Mover was better than this, just in case you haven't seen it. I go seek it out. But uh, true. Eh. <laughs> hey, 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 come on now. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. Okay, I'll give you guys that one. Talk about Lorraine Gary a little bit. This is her final movie that she appeared in. It was also her first movie role in eight years, which again plays into the uh, all the factors that I was talking about her appearing in, in Jaws. S- uh, Sir Michael Caine. Uh, he has a lot of fun quotes about this film. Uh, this is one that's pretty well known. He said, "Quote about Jaws: The Revenge." I have never seen it, but by all accounts, it is terrible. However, I have seen the house that it built, and it is terrific. So, uh, and you're welcome for me not trying to do a Michael Caine impression when I read that. Thank you. Uh, quote. <laughs> also, Michael Caine, he said this about the movie. He said, quote, won an Oscar, built a house, and had a great holiday. Not bad. 
for a flop movie. He was paid one and a half million dollars for seven days of work in the Bahamas. And uh, he missed the Oscars uh, because he he won an Oscar that year. Best actor in a supporting role for Hannah and her sisters, uh, which had come out the previous year. Uh, but, but he missed the Oscars because he was filming Jaws the Revenge. So there you go. Wow. Mm. Wow. But it, it built that beautiful house, so I'm sure it was worth it. Now, um, Mario Van Peebles, he wrote his own part mm-hmm. in the film, which doesn't surprise me based off the quality of his character in title. <laughs> okay, who is this guy? Like, everybody talks about this guy like he's somebody big. Like, who is this guy? I know I know which character he is, but what's he in? Well, he's uh, the son of, uh, I think his dad's name was Melvin Van Peebles, who was um, in the exploitation genre. He was actually a, you know, um, uh, fairly successful director so far as that measure goes um and he's been in a number of uh movies never really i would say great films but he's uh, an actor director and writer um and he was uh he was i'd say probably the one that comes to mind for good or ill is that he is in highlander three um Yes! Which, is its, yes! which is its own terrible movie. Which ignores uh, the second film record. and starts a new continuity. That's right. <laughs> they Another were, reboot, cool. They've been doing this go. for years, people. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Uh, sunrise, sunset. But yeah, Mario Van Peebles has been in a number of things. I remember that he did... Uh, because uh, this was a joke when Solo, a Star Wars story came out. Oh, a movie called Solo, yes! He did a movie called Solo. And so my friend would send me these things. It's like, I, I keep looking at the poster. I don't see what this has to do with Han. Because good. the poster is just Mario Van Peebles doing a uh, flying sidekick. <laughs> um, yeah. Ah, uh, Well, uh, getting back to Jaws the Revenge. Roy Scheider. He was asked to reprise his role as Chief Brody. And there's a couple of quotes from him that kind of contradict themselves, I guess. But ultimately, he didn't appear in the film. He said, one quote, Satan himself could not get me to do Jaws Part 4. And uh, the other quote was, the only way I would reprise my role is if I were to be killed off at the beginning of the movie. Uh, Apparently, they had planned for that to happen, but that all kind of fell through. He ultimately didn't do it. That's why they shifted that over uh, to Sean, Mike's younger brother. And if you think about, like, the movie itself, it would kind of make more sense if if it was, you know, Chief Brody, the, Mm -hmm. the shark getting revenge and then the wife getting revenge for the death of the chief. And so it's all this, this cause you're like, who, who's getting revenge here, you know, in, in the movie, but they kill off. Luckily they had the two sons. They could kill one off and keep the other one and keep the story going. But uh, anyway, uh, Murray Hamilton was also asked to reprise his role as the mayor uh, at the beginning of the, of, of the film, but he died of cancer uh, before the film uh, started production. So he was unable to no. uh, reprise his role. Uh, although would he really be the mayor? Like, 15 years later? I, I don't know. So, Well, it's probably yeah, just more like five that. years later, and the kids have just aged more than they should have <laughs> <in the movies. laughs> That's a very good point. It's a very good point. Wait a minute here. We're, we're Star Trek and sci-fi fans. Amity Island is obviously a uh, victim of... Yeah, it's victim of like a uh, time-space continuity <laughs> issue. Yes, clearly. And, you know, that that is why... I mean, if we really want to go uh, whole hog here, we could say it's like the island from Lost, and they're stepping between realities, and that's why everybody's older than they should be. There you this go. Is the there island go. from Lost. I love it. Yeah. Who's Jacob? Who's Jacob? Head cannon. The shark monster. <laughs> the shark monster. Right there. <laughs> now, the original script, they, they were very, they, they, look, they had high hopes for this, right? And this kind of reminds me of Superman 4 as well, but Gene Hackman did return to Superman 4. Again, I keep... I, we're going to get to the movie eventually, okay, guys? But the point, the point is, um, the original script had a cameo written for Richard Dreyfuss, uh, for Hooper from the first film. Uh, he talks uh, to the Brodies over the phone, and uh, the daughter calls him Uncle Matt, and it's established that he's been close to Mike and his wife. Uh, so anyway, that, that, that didn't happen, though. They, they, yeah, they, didn't, they did not get Richard Dreyfuss back. There was a lot of deleted material that you can find uh, on the internet if you if you really want to delve deeper into the saga of Jaws the Revenge. But there there is a, a subplot that has a uh, Hoagie Michael Caine's character smuggling drugs on the island. They deleted those scenes because they thought it took away from from the main story of the shark. Uh, and they go into a lot of detail for this in the novelization. But there is there is one little bit where Mike they're in the plane and Mike asks him, uh, "What do you do when you don't fly people?" He's like, "I deliver laundry." <laughs> it's just. <laughs> kind of mm-hmm. funny, I thought, but that's why he's gambling, he's in debt, and I, those 